Box Tools. So if this is your first visit to my channel, I'm Tom, and a little bit about myself, I'm a lifelong metal worker, avid tool collector, and practitioner of all things mechanical. During the day, I work for a not-so-secret government lab doing basically what Q does for James Bond, uh, but it's for our scientific research staff. So making sure they have all the tools and widgets they need to do their do their important research. So when I'm here at home, I work on my own projects and explore uh, a trade uh, that's been very, very good to me. And part of my responsibility to that trade is to share my knowledge and experience with those folks like yourself out there and try to preserve some of this knowledge for future generations. So with that said, uh, what we got going on today is a continuation of a uh, multi-series or multi-video project. So let's uh, take a look at where we're at on that and what the next steps are. All right, what we got going on today is this is a continuation of this project here, uh, these adjustable V-blocks. And I made a uh, little, well, I didn't make the box, but I made the little insert. Uh, I had the, I've had this box for years and I've finally put it to good use stowing these. So we're, we're working on these and what we're doing today is we're actually working on these pieces here and in particular what we're working on is these grinding relief grooves here and um, so we're going to pick up on that and then we're going to show some hand work doing the um, the blending and the radii uh, on these uh, on these edges okay and then uh, the end of this video uh, we'll conclude with uh, preparing all these parts uh, for heat treat uh, so we did the we're doing the heat treating here and oops pay attention so some some fussy guy fitted these so uh, um, you gotta get it just right to get it in there okay shoot. okay good um, so and uh, we'll bag these and uh, get them ready for heat treat so uh, let's get cracking all right we're gonna use a this is a uh, magnetic V block which is kind of a handy little little deal and we're gonna cut those uh, grinding reliefs in there um, so I got a pretty good side to hold on to here like so and then I'm just gonna stand it up like that okay turn that on and then I got pretty good uh, pretty good uh, registration there um, now you got steel on steel here which you see if I push hard enough I can make it slide so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, you know the equivalent to uh, this is just a post-it note so get the crud out of there okay push it down snug it in turn this on and then this increases the uh, the, the friction uh, between those two surfaces it acts like kind of like brake lining or whatever um, to give you a little bit more uh, a little bit more grip now you gotta watch it you can't go too thick because uh, then the magnetic force starts dropping off and then uh, you're you're going back and forth between there uh, those two uh, forces so you can you can run an indicator between these two surfaces and spin it and uh, equalize it at a certain height uh, this distance to get centered up right over the crack um, I'm not going to do that in this case uh, I'm just going to get close to the end here and uh, take a look at it and um, and go with that so Okay, suck fest. How much for that plan? All right, hopefully we I'm sure screw it up. Let's see what we got in there. All right, it looks looks like we might have survived there. There's a little dingus McGee in it, but. Not too bad. You know what? Maybe it was the uh, 
the addition of the um, the oil that uh, interfered with that. All right, we got to get a better setup. All right, well, we're going to try this now. See if we can uh, not blow it. And I'm not going to hand feed it, unfortunately. But uh, I think I got a more secure clamp. Anything? I was kind of kind of surprised uh, that that other one uh, moved, but. Oh well, right? All right. Let's make sure I get this thing. So I'm sitting in a V-block, and I'm, and the V-block is shorter than the part. I happen to have a V-block that was shorter, and now I'm squeezing it between two vice jaws here, which, well, <laughs> I'll let you know in a minute how it works. So far, so good. This is my punishment for uh, forgetting to do this before, because I have to hand feed it, right? Yeah, a lot of uh, you know these kind of experience things are getting into trouble and then having to sort it out and learning a lesson, right? Uh, like, oh, I won't do that again, right? Um, well, you know, a lot of the best learning is uh, is stuff like that, right? What that looks like. Oh, I think I'll go back through there. Oh, yeah. Set of zero. We cleaned up pretty good. There's a little, a little mark on that wall back there, but I don't think it's gonna upset me too much. All right, so now I really want to use that same spot again, so I gotta flip the part around and drop, drop, drop it in this way, and then make sure I'm up against that, and then I'm sitting down in the V block. I mean, all this wonderful stuff now. Oh man, this, this is not cool. I don't like this. This just doesn't have a good, uh, a good sense there. Oh, okay, there. is that how you do it? Okay. Well, maybe that's it. Just need three hands here. Okay, that feels better. All right. Okay. Well. Let's do another one. You know what this means, right? It means there's some filing action coming up. That's what this means. I just feel like doing that on these these radiuses. Besides, I like to sniff uh, Dicom anyway. You guys knew there was going to be some um, some filing involved, so this is what we want them to look like when uh, um, before they go into heat treat. Um, so I got a little bit of work to do on these two here. So you'll see that I've. I've kind of laid out the uh, the edges of the radii. This is as helpful when you're doing this filing, so you have some kind of guidelines. Um, and then this is the the larger one on the end here. That's the extents of that's the tangency point, I guess, is what I want to say um, uh, about the uh, the radii radius. So uh, let's do a little filing. Uh, I won't torture you too much on camera with uh, with filing, but we'll do. Uh, We'll do one edge or something like that and show it on camera so you guys can uh, uh, enjoy it with me because I sure like to do this kind of stuff. So we're going to start with a, uh, a number two pillar file here and, um, and just kind of take most of this material off.
and I don't know, I do this, uh, actually, you know what, I don't like this one. Let's try this bigger one. Oh, there we go. This is also a number two. It's just wider and probably sharper at this point. So basically what I'm doing is I'm kind of creating a series of flats that are parallel. They take most of the material off. And then when I feel it kind of skate and the... the uh, the file's getting loaded up. Uh, I'll wipe it or flip it and get to a different spot. Okay. And then tap it every once in a while to knock ships out. Okay, so we're getting, getting kind of close here. So I'm going to switch to a, a finer file. And this one, I like this one here. This is a number four uh, pillar file. These are Grobits. Uh, which are really nice, nice files. So I'll do some more parallel here. And this cuts nice and slow, so you can do precise work. Get a, get a nice straight line along there. So, and then we'll do, we're going to do a rolling technique here, which is squeaking like crazy. I got it hanging out of the vise, that's why, why it's uh, squeaking like that. And I'm not using very much pressure at this point. And that's about it right there. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to I'm going to do this this end here, this curve here. I'm going to reorient the piece so that I'm at a at a real favorable angle for uh, for filing. Now this one, there's not so much material to remove, so I'm probably just starting with the the number four here. I don't want to go crazy and uh, and overshoot. Easy to take off, but it's uh, really hard to put back. Once again, I'm doing the kind of faceting first to take the, the bulk of the material off. And then, yeah. See, that took just a fraction of the time. So I'm concentrating on keeping this nice and flat. And then a nice smooth. And I, once again, I'm, I'm using very little pressure here. I'm going to go a little more in there. Trying not to hit the camera with my head. Just a teeny bit more on this side here. Like that, okay. And then we'll, I'm gonna leave that one alone for now. Cause I'll do this large, this large radius here and then I'll come back and, and blend that around the corner uh, nicely. So anyway, that's kind of how you do that. Um, so let's, I'll do the other side and then I'll come back and I'll show you this radius because that one's a lot larger and uh, uh, slightly more interesting from a filing standpoint.
this is the big radius and this one we're gonna we're gonna hit this with a zero which is uh, a coarser file these are Swiss pattern files so they go from like I don't know triple odd or quadruple odd up uh, up numerically so the higher the number the finer the file so um, Town on this. So I'm concentrating on trying to keep that approach line parallel to that. You don't want to get real close on one side and have it tapered, so. I'm concentrating on keeping that line parallel and that's what I'm that's my visual indicator that I'm using I guess uh, is what I want to say uh, to kind of track what I'm doing and I'm using a fair amount of pressure at this point Probably notice the cadence has slowed down a little bit because I'm, I'm sneaking up on that line. I want to be a little bit careful. Not a lot careful, but a little bit careful. And I'm going to switch to a, a finer file here in a minute. No, you don't want anything to get out of control too far. Keep it, keep it reined in. All right, that's pretty good. Let's switch over to. Uh, let's just go with the four here. can do too is we can draw a file this and sometimes this is more controllable for people is to draw a file because you're working parallel to the uh, your target there let's do a little of that just to give you the idea here And you can see, you see how fine that stuff is? The swarf coming off of that. There, and then off we go. 
right, that's pretty good. So, and this file is so fine that uh, we can go right to sandpaper from this. Actually, I'm going to bring that up just a little more. Just like that. Okay. And now what? Oh, okay. So let's, uh, we're gonna, I'll reorient and then we'll do these corners, or I'll do one for you. And, um, and that'll be it for the filing portion of this video. Now this one, we're definitely gonna use the, the number four on this because there's so little material there. We don't wanna like overshoot, right? Technique's a little different in that uh, I'm kind of rolling around the corner this way. And you want to work on small features like this, you want to work slow. If you, if you slip and you put a you know, you catch the corner or something like that, then uh, the only way to get out of it is to take more off and blend and fade it into another uh, another surface there. Uh, rubberized abrasive. I think uh, some people call these Bright Boy. It's basically rubberized abrasive. They're kind of nice because they're conformal, but um, and they break down to fit the shape real nice. So that's that's looking pretty nice there. Okay, you guys like that? So I do. Okay. Anyway, that's. That's uh, that. I don't know about you, but I sure like doing this kind of stuff. This is great. I'm going to finish that and do the other one, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Okay, so it's heat treat day, and we got a stainless steel foil bag, and then uh, we're going to put all these parts in there. First, I'm going to put some uh, strips of paper in here. These are uh, actually, you know what? I think I'll put those in afterwards. Um, these are to consume the the oxygen that's uh, that's left in the uh, in the uh, the bag after I close it up, um, and helps uh, with uh, minimizing uh, scaling and stuff. So, let's see if we can get everything in here. And I don't know if you've ever worked with this. Uh, particular material, the stainless I should say, it's uh, <laughs> you got to be like really careful because it uh, will cut, it will cut you to ribbons. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Looks like I'm going to make it here. 
used to I used to have a roll of this, but and I did this more often. But uh, not anymore. Not one more. All right, then we're gonna drop some slivers of paper in here, and these will just, you know, at 450 or whatever, they'll uh, they'll just uh, burn up. And you want enough in there that uh, that uh, it uses up all the oxygen, and you actually end up with some some charcoal left because because uh, you've used all the oxygen. So put it this way, you, it, you know, you can put it's okay to put too much in. I guess is what I'm saying. I'm scared of uh, getting cut here. Okay. There we go. Now we got it. Now we get a, get a nice fold going. Let me finish this up and then uh, we'll go fire up the oven and then we'll stick it in the oven. And um, I'm probably, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and put it in there. And uh, when I bring it out to quench it, uh, I'll show it on camera because that's kind of uh, kind of fun.